This is the NintendoRepairShop.com, and we're going to re uh, repair the broken hinge on an original Nintendo DS. On this unit, the lower inner shell has broken, and we are going to replace that uh, with the Nintendo DS. Uh, you can replace the upper half of the shell or the lower half of the shell by itself without having to remove the entire unit and completely disassemble it. So we're going to flip it over, remove the battery cover, and you're going to need a set of tools for this. You're going to need a small Phillips head screwdriver. You're going to need a tri-wing screwdriver. In some cases you'll need a small flat head uh, if you need to pry anything open. A pair of tweezers and an exacto blade. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the battery cover and remove the battery. And on the bottom of the unit, there are a total of seven tri wing screws. You have two on each side, one in the lower center, and two up here at the top. So go ahead and remove those screws. And it's always a good idea to keep your screws organized so when you're putting everything together you don't have to dig through and you don't wind up with a screw being in the wrong place. You can use uh, double sided tape or uh, we have a small multi bin tray here that we like to use. And we have one more screw. Alright, and the bottom will just pull straight off of the unit. Oop, we forgot one. So you just pull the bottom straight off of the unit. And now we have the motherboard exposed. And on the motherboard you have a total of four screws holding it in. You have one here, 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 and up here under the game slot. So we're going to go ahead and remove all four screws. So that we can remove the motherboard. To uh, fix this, uh, you do have to purchase a new shell kit. Um, you can either change out the entire shell if you'd like to, and we can cover the top path in another video. Um, but one thing important to remember, whenever you order a new shell, if it comes with a new set of screws, you want to use those screws because they can be of a different size and the shell could use a different size set of screws. So now you're going to want to disconnect the antenna and lay that to the side. And just lift the motherboard up slightly to remove the left and right shoulder buttons. There is a spring that comes with them. It's very simple. It just goes right back on the unit. Now that we have the motherboard removed, you have your upper LCD ribbon cable clip here. So you're going to want to just lift the clip. You can either use your fingernail or the small screwdriver. Um, and then you're going to pull against the ribbon cable. And you want to be careful. The ribbon cables can tear and crimp easily. So um, once you have that removed, we can go ahead 
lift up the lower half of the unit and push in from the touch screen to go ahead and lay the motherboard over. Now on the back of your LCD is the ribbon cables actually let me go ahead and disassemble the motherboard from the LCD. Same here you have a ribbon cable clip. You're going to pull that and gently just wiggle that out. Oop, looks like the touch screen clip came out with it. And you have a little slider there. So we're going to go ahead and slide out the other side and pull that cable loose. And we could just lift the motherboard completely off and set it to the side. And right here, looks like this unit's been worked on before. If it has it, underneath of this insulation is where the ribbon cable runs and it's attached to the lower LCD. So you'll want to use your X-Acto blade and cut alongside of the ribbon cable. You don't want to cut the ribbon cable itself and you'll be able to peel it off. So once you peel this back inside of the lower half you're going to have another Phillips head screw right here and this holds a door unit right here. So we're going to go ahead remove this screw and set that to the side. And we can go ahead and pull off the top cover. Now being as you don't have to completely disassemble the unit, uh, you do need to uh, remove the top half of the upper unit to pull out these hinges here so that way you can insert the new board and get them pushed back in. So we'll go ahead and do that. We've already got the lower LCD detached. And go ahead and stand this up. You're going to, need to use your X-Acto blade to go ahead and lift off the four sticker pads that cover the four screws of the upper LCD case. And then you have four Phillips head screws that hold the upper LCD case together. So go ahead and remove all four screws. And before we open that, uh, the ribbon cable and the Wi-Fi antenna cable will, there's a slot in the system that you just go ahead and slide everything through. And as always, just be careful with your ribbon cable. You got to kind of pull it out in kind of a, a diagonal fashion. So now that we have this removed, you can see we have our broken hinges. That'll just give us more room to work with. To open the upper LCD half, you can either use your fingernail or a small flathead screwdriver. You start on one side and you lift it until it 
opens up. There we go. And then you can just slide around with your fingernail all the way around the sides. Sometimes they're a little more ornery, but it will just come apart. There's nothing attached on the inside. If this piece falls out, you do want to make sure that you insert it back into the unit. You don't want to lose that. That kind of holds your upper LCD screen in place. So with the upper half exposed, you're just going to push your two hinges inwards. You don't have to remove them, but you want them clear of this space that we're working with here. So you can either use your screwdriver, tweezers, um, essentially anything to push. If it pops out, just go ahead and put it back in. Sometimes they are a little bit of a pain. There we go. Now we're ready to bring in the new lower half of the unit. I've already gone ahead and put the game pads on. Um, when you do get a new uh, shell kit, sometimes you'll want to use your X-Acto blade, hobby knife to um, trim off small excesses of plastic on the side. Um, that'll keep it from seating properly. And that's just from the, the process they used to make them. So we're going to go ahead, flip this over, and set our unit on and then we'll just pop the hinges back into place and that locks the two halves together and when you feed the ribbon cable through it's important to get it through the right way if you don't send it through the right way then it'll it'll be twisted and your unit won't work for very long so when you put it through you're going to want to make sure you have your cable rolled in this fashion if you're replacing the cable. And you send it through just like this. You send through the wide end first. And that allows it to all fit in much more easily and smoothly. These are tricky because they are flipped around in a certain fashion. Now we have the lower shell pulled through. Like I said, it is tricky sometimes because the cable is, it's actually turned around so when it goes through, it kind of looks like it's going through in an opposite direction. Let's go ahead and make sure we have our spacer back in place. And go ahead and feed your antenna wire back through the unit. To the underside and we'll get everything
pulled back through. And at this point, you're going to want to just go ahead and put the upper shell back on because we've completed that portion and you don't want anything to, to fall out while you're working. So go ahead and place the upper half of the shell back on. And we'll go ahead and put our screws back in. Got one more screw and we can put the sticky pads back on later while we're finishing up the unit all right so before we go further there's one last part of the upper shell right here uh, you're gonna put it on it does have an open end and a closed end the closed end will butt up against the hinge and keep that in place. So we'll go ahead, you gotta make sure that your hinge is all the way in. If it's uh, at all, even just a little bit, then it's not going to, to seat properly. And also remember that the new shells, not all of the older, par older, par older parts will fit together properly. So sometimes you do have to use all of the newer parts in order to get everything together. So we're going to go ahead and put our screw back in. To hold that upper unit together. There we go. Now we can go ahead and seat the lower LCD back into place and we're gonna reattach the ribbon cable. So we like to use a small side piece of uh, double-sided tape as it just makes it that much easier. If you don't have double-sided tape, usually the adhesive on the back right there will still be sticky enough. And go ahead and just trim that off with your hobby knife. And then if you did cut this off and you're using the original ribbon, you can lay it exactly back into place just following the cut that you previously made before. And there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and put the motherboard back on. Uh, the ribbon cable will need to be folded backwards over itself from the upper LCD so that way it lays properly onto the motherboard. And then over here you have the three ribbon cables, two from the LCD and one from the touch screen. So we'll go ahead and feed all three of those back up through the motherboard. Make sure your antenna does not get stuck underneath. Got everything set down. So if you want to just keep the motherboard from moving, make sure everything gets where it's supposed to be. All 
All right. I'm going to go ahead and put the screws back in to secure the motherboard. So there's a total of four screws. couple steps is where you really want to make sure that you have a pair of tweezers. Um, the LCD ribbon cables, unlike the DS Lite, do not have any tabs on them to let you know when they are fully seated. And they're a little tougher to actually get plugged back into place. So with your ribbon cable in the back folded over, it'll, it should uh, poke out right at the upper LCD ribbon. And you go ahead and just set that into place on your ribbon cable. Like that. You want to take your tweezers and you're going to grip the ribbon cable on the back of it and use the tougher plastic they have on the end as kind of leverage to push the ribbon cable into its slot. And there you go, you see that it just seated. All right, and then you just flip down your your touch your clip, and we'll go ahead do the same over here. The lower two smaller ribbon cables are a little bit easier, um, as they have a piece that slides out and then back in to lock them into place. We'll do the touch screen clip. Go ahead and slide that into place and push that back down. If you don't push these down, they might not make proper contact. And if it's your LCD, it won't work properly. And if it is your touch screen clip, it won't work properly. It'll only have a, a very slight connection. And the same thing we did with the upper LCD ribbon. You have this edge of plastic that you're going to use with your tweezers as a way to push in the unit, the, the ribbon to the, the touch screen or to the, the ribbon cable clip. Once you have that in all the way, you go ahead and lock it down and you have it secured. And then before we put the unit back on, just put on your antenna cable. Go ahead and put that down. And if you have any slack you want to make sure you just kind of turn it to the side so that way it's not going to lay over your screw holes or anything like that. And then put on your left and right shoulder buttons. Uh, they're relatively easy. You just there's this little channel right here below your left and right shoulder buttons that that spring will go into. So all you have to do is set the spring into it and drop the button into place. So we'll go ahead and do the same on this and I'll hold it up so you can see it a little better. So go ahead and it in under and it just goes right into place. Now you just take your lower shell, put it on, and we'll go ahead and put in the tri wing screws. Start here at the battery cover. 
I always like to start at the battery cover. That way it's actually holding the unit in. And I can go ahead and test it before completing assembly. So if you're not experienced with repairing these units, you can, before you begin to screw anything down, go ahead and get your ribbon cable seated and test the unit before you get everything together and have it all taken apart so you can know what is and is not working. On the DS, if you did not fully seat your ribbon cable, uh, it does not have a green flash as you would get on the DS Lite. If your ribbon cable is not connected properly, you will not get anything to happen. You might hear a very faint sound come out of your speakers but the unit will not flash and you'll have a solid orange on the charger. So any ribbon cables that you disconnected, you're going to want to go back and check to make sure that they have been properly attached. And then the last screw. And now we'll go ahead and put our sticky pads back on to the top half of the unit. So your two bumper pads, they're, they're thicker than the lower two do go at the top. And they act as, they'll just absorb the shock if you close the unit hard and Help to keep everything nice and neat. So we have just two more. And now we can go ahead and put the battery in the unit and replace the battery cover and power it on. Turn the unit over, press your power button, and we'll check the touch screen, make sure it's working properly. And we are good to go. We've just repaired a lower broken hinge on the Nintendo DS. Uh, all parts can be purchased at NintendoRepairShop.com. Uh, you can also order a tri-wing screwdriver. And we have a list of videos for other repairs also. And that's it. We've successfully repaired this unit.